Hi, and welcome to The Beer Temple. I am Chris Quinn, and I have my lovely wife, Margaret Quinn, with me once again. It's been a while since you called me lovely. Thank you for that. You're very welcome, my <laughs> lovely wife, Margaret Quinn. <laughs> we have a style show for you guys today oh. where we're going to look at several beers of the same style. Uh, we're going to be talking about Doppelbox. And I had a show about German Doppelbox in the past, and we've actually had... American Doppelbox on, but I've said both times, this is not the definitive Doppelbox show. Mm -hmm. So eventually we had to have the definitive Doppelbox show. So I figured I would, would do that, and I, I picked three out that I thought are representative of Doppelbox. You can always have more, but I picked three really good ones, three important ones, I mm -hmm. felt. And... We'll just put them head to head and see who wins, really. It's kind of fun. Yeah, it's exciting. So, Doppelbox. Okay, Bach beer. It's a it means double Bach. Doppel Bach. Bach beer is, uh, do, uh, Bach means goat. So that's why there's always a picture of a goat, or often a picture of a goat, or in this case, a little toy goaty. Which wins my heart every time. Yeah. Um, but v oftentimes, especially with American beers, or not especially, but even with American Doppelbox, you're going to see the goat on it. So when you see a billy goat on a beer, it's going to be a Doppelbox. Mm -hmm. The other thing is when you see something called an Ator. So we've got Salvator, Celebrator, Optimator. That means it's a Doppelbox. Right. Really interesting history behind the Doppelbach. It didn't come out, start out as a double Bach beer. It was its own thing, and it had characteristics that reminded people of a more robust Bach beer, so it kind of got that name Doppelbach. But it really was the original liquid bread beer. A lot of times you hear Germans refer to beer as liquid bread. This is the style that coined that term. And the reason being was during Lent, the brothers at the Polliner Monastery fasted so they could not eat anything but they felt that drinking kind of cleansed your soul and was very and your body your body and your soul so they would brew beer and that's all they would you know they would drink water i guess too i don't know yeah well, and it seems like they would have to and they would brew this beer yeah and this is what they would drink and it was obviously a very big robust beer full of nutrients mm -hmm. And they named it after the Savior, Salvator. And it's so funny in you know reading about um, Doppelbox, and it's something I kind of do, just kind of read about beer history in general. One of the things that I think is just so cool was you know the monks they're always so self-flagellating. They're saying this beer is so good, should we be allowed to drink it? Mm. So they asked for a papal dispensation to allow them to drink this beer <laughs> sent them a sample of the beer wow the beer spoiled on the way over to rome wow the pope drank it it was rancid and said anything this ra nasty must be good for you yeah. so he said you're allowed to He's like, have at it yeah you're this allowed to gross. brew it and throughout the history there's been a lot of contention and a lot of people trying to outlaw the Doppelbach because it is a strong beer. It's one of the strongest German lagers. And just time and time again, you see these like really like King, I think it finally came to an end when King Ludwig I came down and said, brewing Salvator is legal until I say otherwise. And they, he would have a glass every year at the beginning of Lent until until he died. Well, then it's a very, very timely show for us today, then, yes. because it is the beginning of Lent. Um, mm -hmm. We just had Ash Wednesday, so we're we're certainly into the Lenten season here. Yeah. So it's perfect timing. Yeah. So there you go. Um, the other thing I wanted to say really quick was, um, so they called it Salvator, and that's the only place that would that would do it. Eventually, they had to secularize. Napoleon secularized the whole region and. Uh, Polliner was, was one of them, and other breweries started to make Salvator as well. So they eventually asked for, they had to wait until there was trademark mm -hmm. laws on the right. books, and then they had it outlawed saying, no, 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 Salvator isn't a style of beer, that is our beer. Right. So then the other people changed the names of their beer, 
adding the H-T-O-R on it mm -hmm. so that you knew it was the same style, and that is the history of why they're all haters. Mm -hmm. Pretty Aters, cool. Yeah. To me, to me, very geeky, but pretty cool. Yeah, absolutely. So what does the beer taste like? It is a lager, so it's going to be clean. It's not going to be you know overly fruity, anything like that. Mm -hmm. It is higher in alcohol. It's going to be around 7% or so, and it's going to be very malty. A lot okay. of malt goes into this beer. So, uh, what is the opponent? Still brewed at the original place. Oh, wow. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, does it say 7.9% alcohol? Oh, wow, 7.9. That's higher than I thought it would Big be. Big lager. Yeah, it's you're like right. one of the biggest lagers. So, wonderful, kind of rich, burnt, kind of autumn leaf color right. yeah yeah uh like light orange kind of you mm -hmm. know amber colored um colored beer very clear too which is mm -hmm. it's nice to look at beer's a little tad cold you want to drink this beer maybe at cellar temp something mm -hmm. like that we pulled this out of the fridge um but it smells... Oh, man, it smells great. It smells great. It smells like cereal, you know? It smells mm -hmm. like... Um, but I'm almost getting like a toffee cereal. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Just like a really nice, sweet mm -hmm. malt flavor and clean. I mean, you're not getting any hops. Very, very light hopping on these beers. Just enough to to balance out the malt. Yeah, very sweet grain is what I get here. Mm -hmm. I mean, this smells like if when you go on a brewery tour, you go into the room where they're brewing and you know, you, you get that kind of very sweet, almost like, in a way, like cloying sweetness that, that's in the air. Um, that's exactly what it smells like to me. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, to me, it almost smells like really wonderfully caramelized biscuity mm -hmm. bread. Yeah, I definitely get biscuit out of that too. And Not quite honey, but like almost like a really rich, deep, bordering on honey, but like a, a rich like wildflower honey, something like that. Yeah. For anyone who notices anything strange about the setup today, we do we I am baking bread right now and there was sort of an issue with the oven. Let's just say things were smoking back there. Oh, is it like um, literally that smoky here? No, I don't I think it was a little smoky. Mm -hmm. So if you notice there's things are hazy, that's why. Okay. Fermentation of a different sort taking place in our kitchen right now. Yeah. Um but yeah, let's Have give you it a taste. Any? Yeah. I mm. just did. Mmm. And you know, it really tastes it's just, good beer. It tastes a lot like it smells. I mean, mm -hmm. it tastes you you get the grain, you get the malt, you get the sweetness, which is really uh -huh. delicious. And you want to take another sip. And you want to take another sip, although that's my <laughs> MO anyway. I always take another sip. Uh -huh. Um but but yeah, I mean, this just tastes like really, you know, really nice, sweet yeah. grain water. Um, it's uh, grain water. It's, it doesn't so, sound good. Yeah. So what you, for me, what you get is just a very nice, rich malt flavor. If you guys like malty beers, or I don't know, what does malt taste like? Get a Doppelbach mm -hmm. because you're not going to have any of that ale, yeast, fruit getting in there and you're not gonna have any of the hops it is just a pure kind of window into a nice big rich malt bill yeah and it's really well done toffee and caramel but still clean crisp drinkable hides the alcohol very well yeah. and i'm really really digging yeah. this beer this beer um you know you can get for not that much i think it's about 10, 11 bucks a six pack. Mm -hmm. So reasonable, mm -hmm. reasonable, especially considering the alcohol, really. Yeah, it does hide the alcohol very well. I have to agree with you about that. Yeah. Um, you know, to me, this is just, a, just it's, it's weird to say drinkable when it's 7.9%, but it is just a really nice drinkable beer. You could get in trouble with this you beer. You could definitely get in trouble with this beer. It's just got a nice, sweety, malty flavor. Yeah. Um, and, you know, I think for food and stuff like that, I think it yeah. was it is also really versatile and could go with a lot of different foods, specifically maybe like, you know, roasted chicken or something like that. Although we're having beef stew for dinner tonight, and I think that will go well. What do you rate it? Uh, rating? Uh, 92. I'm going to go 94. I'm going to go higher. I really, really like the beer. I think it's good. It's a classic. And if I'm reaching for a Doppelbach in the future, all things considered, I think the uh, Salvator, Salvator, whatever Salvator. you want. Salvator is uh, gonna be up there. Yep. But then again, who knows if it'll be the winner because up next is one of my favorites. Right. Uh, Iyengar, 
Uh, it's hard for us to go through a German beer episode without me pulling out something for my anger. <laughs> this is their celebrate celebrator. I love the little goats on the front too with the beer, like goats holding up a bottle or a glass of beer. Yep. See, and this is kind of more of what I had in mind um, with the with the, with the the color of the Doppelbock. This mm -hmm. looks like something I could actually survive on during Lent. Um, the uh -huh. the polliner seemed a little thin to me. I guess time will tell here. This is have. really like a ruby, almost like a a port color, not even like a tawny port. Like yeah, a, a dark. Port, like a yeah, ruby port. Hints of red in this for sure. Mm-hmm. And you know, really nice. nice. Um, con considerably lower in alcohol. This is six point seven percent alcohol, mm -hmm. so you're a full uh, over a percentage point less. I don't get as much of that kind of grainy sweetness on the mm -hmm. on the nose on this. It's no, a you're getting a yeah, you're getting a darker a darker flavor to it. You're not getting that same toffee. I just spilled it down your face. I, yeah, I, I came. Came, came close to snarfing it up my nose. Oh, probably. I've done that before. Thanks. I'm getting a nice raisiny quality yeah, to it. I definitely get that too. Yep. Yeah. Like a dried fruit, but not a yeasty fruit. It's it's definitely the malt kind of accentuating mm. itself. Nice dark, a little bit roasted, but um, not not toasted though. Yeah. You know, it's it's roast. It's, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, have a sip because I've already had a little sip. And you know that roast, which is what we just ended on, that is what's coming through for me yes. as well. This is, I think, it's just, you know, it's just really, there's a lot going on here. Mm -hmm. um, it's got that nice roast. It's got that sweet malt. Yeah, it does. It does have some residual sweetness in it, so it has a little bit fuller mouth feel. You're getting a little bit of that dried raisiny quality as well. Wonderful malt as well. Very different than. The Very salvator. Different. So where you're getting that really toffee flavor, uh, a lighter body. This is darker, richer, mm -hmm. not smoky, but it's like kind of bringing about those kind of like earthy feelings yeah. to it. Nice kind of dried. Mm. Uh, yeah, just a wonderful of smell. Like, like a like a dark like raisin bread or something mm -hmm. like that. You mm -hmm. know, because um, you get that that multi mm. kind of like grainy sweetness Man. in it. Well, I, I like this one even. More. Yeah, I do too. I have to say this this is more of what I want out of a double uh -huh. buck. And plus you get a cool little goat ornament, so there's that. A little bit more money for this one. Because you're paying for the goat. You're paying for the goat. You know, you got zero goats on this, you got three goats on this if you're including the toy. <laughs> I like the toy. Yeah, you can hang it on. It'd be a good uh, Christmas Ooh, ornament. I think it goes back on the uh, yeast shelf, the beer shelf. Here, I'll have it be <laughs> stabbed by the... Space Marine. Okay. There so, you go. What do you think of, as far as rating on the Celebrator? 96. It's good. It's awesome. Uh, man, that's high. I, I, I have to go 94. I think it was considerably better than the Polliner. Mm -hmm. uh, I do too, but I gave the Polliner a 94. Yeah, so. I think they're both really good beers. You know, within the, the Doppelbach family, mm -hmm. these are two great beers. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. ending it. And mm -hmm. we forgot our water this time. That's fine. Who needs water? We're like, this is liquid bread. We're fasting. Although they probably have water. But. <laughs> yeah. Uh, the Spaten Brewery is one of the oldest continu continually brewing breweries in Germany. Also one of the most important. I mean, these guys are really do you have to get your bread yeah. pause bread bread is ready to be bread the bread is in very good condition just in case you're wondering okay does it look is it like a, a doppelbach nice rich yeah i think I could, I could survive on that bread a, and these beers throughout the lent what's, season what's a solid bread a breaded bread that's what you're making so a liquid bread and breaded bread <laughs> uh optimator spaten one of the oldest continually operating breweries in Germany. When do you think these guys started? Guess. I mean, you're talking, you know, not you're I mean, they're German. Like uh 1637. No, try 1397. Okay. I'm right only right. off by like 300 years, so Yeah. 1397 instrumental in the development of lager. 
I mean, really one of the first breweries on the cutting edge of what lagers were. So that's pretty badass. Yeah, that is. Yeah. This is their Doppelbach, the Optimator. Comes in at 7.6 out. Out, uh, percent alcohol. Wow, so another pretty solid beer, you're yeah. right. And also, 10 bucks a six pack. So, uh, good value, and if it's if it tastes good. And in terms of uh, dating, so that's something that we haven't talked about. Freshness isn't crucial with a Doppelbach. The high alcohol really helps preserve this beer, and also just the nature of you know, it's a very malty beer, so it's going to hold up better than a very hoppy beer would. You know, these beers will age just fine. You don't necessarily need to age them or want to age them, but don't worry too much about it. Um, the only beer that has a very, uh, this has best before August uh, 2012. The others it didn't really give much of an inf uh, much information about it, but if you're at a, a trusted beer store that you think moves through the product somewhat regularly, you'll be fine with the Doppelbach. You don't have to worry too much about how old mm -hmm. uh, it is. Good to know. Yeah. Um, so this one, immediately upon pouring, you can tell that it's just much more similar to the Celebrator. Um, it's mm -hmm. got that dark kind of you know dark brown ruby, ruby color mm -hmm. once again. It just yep. looks like a much more substantial beer than the than the Polliner. Yep. Oh, I gotta smell it first. Mm -hmm. So you're getting similar qualities to the Celebrator. You're yep. getting that raisiny mm -hmm. note to it, that dried fruit, maybe like prunes, something yep. like that. Yep. Um, nice sweetness in the beer, mm -hmm. and and you get the grain too. I mean, mm -hmm. you definitely, you know, you get like yep. that cereal aspect to it. No hops to to speak of. No. Really nice. I mean, these are nice smelling beers. Mm -hmm. A little drier than the other two. Um, quite a bit of that raisiny flavor. I mean, really the most raisiny of the three that we've had. Yeah. This, to me, almost reminds me of like a cinnamon raisin bread, something like that. Yeah, it's, it's very similar to the Celebrator, but I didn't get the roast. Right. You know, the, the Celebrator had like that, that, that deep, rich roast. Mm -hmm. This one has the sweetness of the Celebrator, mm -hmm. but minus the roast. Yes. Very well put. You are on your game. I, I Bring completely, I completely agree. I also feel that there's a bit of a weird kind of aftertaste, not quite an astringency. It, maybe it's a little bit of a bitterness. I think it might be slightly more, it's a little more bitter than the others, which I don't really want with this beer. Um, yeah, the aftertaste to me is just a little bit off. Little acidic aftertaste, but it's nothing that, that's going to bother me. I mm -hmm. mean, this is, in fact, I probably wouldn't have even picked it out if you had, had mm -hmm. not mentioned that. Right. Um, but it's good. Uh, nice raisiny beer, and for you know, ten dollars a six pack. Right. It's it's really good. And it, I'm going to go a little bit lower with this one. Mm -hmm. uh, did you want to say something before? I was just going to say again for food. You know, it's it's been very interesting since we opened the Polliner how different that one is than these two. You know, th this these I think definitely would go more with, you know, the beef and the lamb and, and kind of heavier dishes, heartier dishes. Uh, the Polliner, I would definitely stick to like, you know, chicken or something like that. Maybe pork. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Uh, yeah, it, I think the Polliner is pretty versatile too. I mean, I think it could really stand up well with beef. I mean, a nice steak with this beer I would disagree. be wonderful. Okay. Well. That's fine. Some people can be wrong and some people can be right. Um, I'm used to it. Believe me, you being wrong. You all try it. You be the judge. Would you yeah. want the Polliner Doppelbach with the steak or would you want the lovely sweet roasted Celebrator? I'm not saying which one would be better with the steak. I'm just saying the Polliner would be really good. I think it would be a nice pairing uh, with it. Really good. Um, anyway, but so back the to the Optimator. Optimator. My least favorite of the three. Uh, I still think it's a good beer. I think it's a solid beer. I'm going to go uh, 90 with the Optimator. I just think it's, it, it, doesn't, it doesn't have what's pushing it over the edge. All the elements are there, but they're not really popping. It's that, that aftertaste, I think, is, is, 
something that I don't really like. Who knows? I mean, I also don't like the green bottles, but. You know. That's a really good point. The green bottle could be coming into play there. The Optimator I actually like better than the Polliner. Um, and since I, I think I gave the Celebrator a 94, this was a 92, which I probably would revise left, down. You've... I've left myself with nowhere to go but 93. Um, so I'll have to say 93, I guess, for the, for the Optimator. Okay. Good beer. There you go. I mean, so we've done the definitive Doppelbox show. We could, there's others we could have had. We could have had the EQ Culminator. We could have had Maximator. But I think this is pretty good. We got the original. We got what I feel is the definitive. And we've got, you know, kind of the, the classic German brewery. If we have the Maximator show, can we have Max on? No. All right. Yes, fine. Do we get to dress them like. Uh, Old school German monk. Yes. And shave a little spot on the top of his head. Absolutely. Perhaps later hosen. Oh, yeah, that'd be good. I think we're about done here, guys. Hope you liked our little review of these German Doppelbox. Let us know what you think of it or what you think of these beers or beer, other Doppelbox that we didn't have on this show. Uh, go to the site and leave a comment there. I, I really like seeing them there. I forgot again to do my spam comments. I promise I'll do it. Yeah, because they are awesome. They're worth hearing. They're pretty good. And you've really got it. They're, some of them, they're all so similar. Like, there's there's different types of them. Mm-hmm. Whatever. We'll get to it. But until we get to it, we've got some really good beers to drink. We've got three 90-point-plus beers to yeah. drink. Hopefully, you got some 90-point beers to drink, too. See ya.